Is Emma with us? Almost. <laughs> okay. Almost. She's getting there. Okay. So we're going to. I'm. I'm recording anyway. Doesn't look anything. So let me put the link to the doc. I think I saw some of you on it. on it. Um. Copy. And just remind me when Emma comes back. When Emma comes on, we'll need to put it up again for her. Okay, so there's the link to the Google Doc. And let's go there. So I've made up our, our little tables here. Okay, and I've already filled in for us the, the AR endings. Okay, so these are AR verb endings. So, um, who recalls from Monday how many different types of verbs? Or how many different sets of endings are there on just an infinitive verb? A R I R N D R. Very good. So three. Three types of verb types of verb endings. And they all all verbs fall under either AR, ER, or IR. So that's when the verbs are in their infinitive forms. So infinitive form again means before we conjugate them, before we match them up with their personal pronoun, subject pronoun. Okay. So this is shows us here. So let's take a verb like um, we'll just do presentar okay which is sent and um, so has Emma joined us yet? No. Okay. So um, Vita why don't you go ahead and take no uh, yo em nosotros um, Owen go ahead and take tu en vosotros and then uh, Nehemiah, go ahead and take usted alea and usted ellas and fill in the proper form according to the verb chart. Remember, the first thing we do when we conjugate these um, verbs. I, you us Google, you, you um, got us a uh, Google Docs. What? I don't know how to get on. You see the link? If you if you click on the link, it should take you directly there. Click on the link in the. Um, on a chat bar? In the chat bar, uh huh. Okay. That'll take you directly to it. You don't have to go through all the, jump through all the hoops. It's not in here. The link isn't in the chat bar. Because she didn't send it when I was on here. Oh, up then, yeah. Let me, um, if your chat bar wasn't up, then it won't show. Let me copy this. Let me put it in again. Yeah, if your chat bar is not up or if you're not with us when first put it up, then yeah. There you go. Should be up there again for you. Hola, Emma. Go ahead and join us in our Google Doc I just put up in the chat bar for you. Okay. So we'll go ahead and start this. Um, Vita te guió nosotros, and Owen tú en vosotros, and then Nehemiah, usted alea, usted se. So we're conjugating this for presentar. I remember, first thing you do is you drop off the AR. So I'll just kind of show that, do a strike through. Drop off the AR, then add the endings that you see above. No, that was correct. No, you were right, Vita. Presento. Mm-hmm. Muy bien. Yeah, so right there. To auto -correct me. What's that? Your computer was auto-correcting? Yeah. 
Oh. <laughs> Okay, so Ellen, um, what you have left after you drop off the AR, okay, there you go, and then add your AS, and then you... I have the last one, right? You have the last two, the two on the bottom. Okay. Or the end. What am I supposed to type in, though? Present? The, the usted a leia form of the verb presentar. So you drop off the AR and you add the chart above. Wait, which one did I get? Yo and nosotros, two side by side. Okay. Do I proceed what again? One more time. Do you like what they're doing? What you see Vita and Owen have done above you? Your your do usted a leia form of the verb presentar. You drop off the AR and then you add a. And that's the okay. it. Okay, so like what we were doing on Monday. Muy bien, Owen y muy bien, Vita. Muy bien. Perfecto. Presento. Oops, what happened there? <laughs> Does that spell Five check text. again? <laughs> uh, yeah, usually um, Google Docs is really good about it. Google Docs is so far the best. Oh, hi, Charlie. The dog's coming to learn Spanish with us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So pretty straightforward. If, if Nehemiah gets this. Muy bien, Nehemiah. Oh, so it's just no N there. You don't need the N at the end. Because it's just you just add the A for that one, yeah. And then the next one, you'll add that N. So while we're waiting for Nehemiah to finish up there, you had it right. What happened? Oh, go over here, um, Nehemiah, where my cursor is. We will finish this one, presenta. Okay, so ER, verb endings. Okay, so remember, what did I say about ER verb endings? Once you know AR, it's really easy for ER. Where there, there's A in the ending, right? What do I do with it? I change it to E, right? So um, we'll just go through here really quickly. And we'll do E. I'm sorry, the yo is always O. I'm going to do, oops, undo. Thank God for the undo button. Okay. So it's A. 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 Vamos. Base. Oops, I will need to change that. And N. Copy that accent E. Copy paste. Created copy paste was the smartest person I know. <laughs> I I probably use copy copy paste more than anything else. Okay, paste. Okay, there we go. So now I've listed the ER verb endings there. Looks exactly like the AR verb endings. So now let's look um, at an ER verb. Um, we looked at, I think we looked at beber, the drink. Let's look at comer, okay? Very important word, one you're gonna use a lot. So might as well go ahead and learn this one. Okay, um, we'll switch it around a bit. Um, we'll have um, Emma do yo and, to, yo and nosotros, sorry. Emma, you did the top two. Um, then we'll have Nehemiah do the middle two, two and vosotros. And then we'll go ahead and have Vita do singular, usted, Aleya, and Evan. There I go, terrible. Owen, do ustedes, ellos, ellas. Sorry about that, Owen. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, Nehemiah, what's the first thing we do? We always drop off the ending, the air, before we start conjugation. So you're good, you just forgot to drop off your ending. There you go. Okay, Emma, are you with us? Yeah. I see. I see your cursor. So, yeah, there we go. So, do you understand what we're doing here? Can you explain it again? So, to conjugate verbs, remember, all we do is drop off the, the ending, either the A-R, E-R, I-R, and then we add, we have the little cheater chart above, you add whatever the ending is. So, this is the E-R verb, so the E-R verb chart is right above where we are. So you drop off the ER and you add O for the yo form. And you drop off the ER and add emos for the nosotros form. Okay. So um, I want yours is just all, remember all three of those are the same. So what's the ending for um, ustedes ellos, ellos? Look in the chart above. Okay. So drop, drop off your um, ER and add EN. So instead of come, you have come in. There you go. Just need one, one there. There you go. Wasn't sure what you had going on. Okay. So uh, uh, Nehemiah. Um, for your accent over your E, I have the um, the letters. I'll always try to make sure I have them up at the top. So scroll up to the top of the page or scroll up to any the accent E and do a copy-paste job. Because it's always over the E. Um, the accents up here, the toolbar? No, um, at the very top of the, the Google Doc. I have them all there, or you can actually just go where the verb endings are right above and copy that accented E where it's vosotros right there. Oh, I see. So, Owen, you need your N on the end of yours because you add EN. So for here, um, Emma, so I go up to my verb comer and I will, I will let go. I will drop the ER, right? I'll, um, oh, it just want to show me my toolbar. I'll strike through it. Okay, so I drop that ER and then I add O. So what do I have left? Um, I have C-O-M, right? That's what's left after I drop the E-R off. And then I add O. Looking at the chart above, I go ahead and add your O. Think of this as just a pattern or as the recipe or, you know, the, the formula for forming verbs in Spanish. Okay, so this is, if I want to say, I eat, I say, yo como. Okay, then go over to nosotros, same thing, what do I have left? Start with C-O-M, and then Emma, what am I going to add to it? So it's E-M-O-S, so go ahead and add that in there. There we go.
Your brother was trying to come to the rescue there. There we go. Comemos, okay? Bananas. Nosotros comemos bananas. Okay? We eat cereal. Nosotros comemos cereal. Okay? You eat um, a hamburger. Tú comes una hamburguesa. Okay? So, Does everybody understand? Is this clear? Does anybody have any questions of what, what we're doing here? Anybody? Jen? So you're, you're adding, um, you said um, for each one, excluding um, what you said about to um, comer, um, it means um, you to eat. I mean, I'm not quite hearing you loud enough there, oh, um, Amy Nehemiah. I was going to say that, um, so if we were to put it into a sentence, it would be like, to comer, and that would mean you to eat, right? Yeah, it means you eat. Okay. Because to eat is comer. Oh, okay? I see. So that's why we don't want it to be in there. So if we say, to comer, that means you to eat. And so I don't want to sound awkward. I want to I want to have the right form of the verb. But just like in English saying you to eat. No, you eat, he or she eats, right? Eats doesn't go along with I and we. We don't, we don't say we eat. So it's that. Same, except for there's a whole lot more versions of it in, um, in Spanish, yeah. So if I want to say I eat bananas. Oops, bananas. I don't eat bananas, I eat bananas. I love bananas, I think that's why I say that every time. Yo como bananas. Okay. How would I say we eat bananas? Oops, bananas. How would, someone Who's type there. How, what was that? Is it ustedes? So we, remember, um, the plurals are on the sides of them. So what is, I, I is yo, so we is the plural of I, right? Because we means myself and somebody else. I and, Susie and I eat bananas, okay? We eat bananas. Nosotros, we is nosotros. Okay. So nosotros. So it would be nosotros, right? Nosotros comemos bananas. Okay. We don't know a lot of vocabulary with the verb eat. We haven't learned food yet. Otherwise, I'd, I'd give us all example sentences. So we can go, there you go, singular and plural there. Um, she eats a hamburger. Okay. She eats a hamburger. Oops, she eaters. Oh. Hey, um, there we go. She eats a hamburger. So how am I going to start that up? What's she? Uh-huh. So ella. Come. Hamburguesa. Muy bien. Okay. So we'll add una here because she eats a hamburger. We just don't eat. There's a difference, right, between eating hamburger and eating a hamburger, right? So, ella come una hamburguesa. Muy ella come una hamburguesa. Um, we eat a, um, let's see, um, they. So what's they? Well, they is the plural of he or she, right? So we'll just use ellos. So they eat a sandwich. Sandwich is a cognate, straight cognate. And it's masculine. So you should be, they eat a sandwich. Okay. 
So ellos comen. Uh huh, comen. What's right? Yeah, I see the spell check on that one sandwich. Yeah. One sandwich. Okay. Muy bien. And some people put accents in sandwich, some people don't. It should actually have a, an, an accent over there. Ellos comen un sandwich. Un sandwich. Muy bien. Muy bien. So, um, Emma, is this is this clearer to you now? Yeah. Okay, so the whole process of conjugation is just to put the proper form of the verb with the proper subject pronoun. Okay, I can't say yo comemos. It, you know, it's like saying I eat. You know, I it's it's not it's not proper. The proper form is yo como. Okay. So um, you eat um. Let's see, you eat peanut. That word. Tu comes, tu comes cacahuates. Cacahuates. I'll, I'll write that down just so you see. It's, it's a fun word. Okay. Tu comes cacahuates. Cacahuates. Tu comes cacahuates. That's peanuts. Okay. You eat peanuts. There's other, oops, somehow I got on cap locks, didn't mean that. And then, anybody remember what the differences were between ER verb endings and IR verb endings? What were the differences between? Just two subtle differences between ER and IR endings, okay? And that is just, so we'll just do IR verb endings. Okay. So the only difference is, so I'll only put the differences in, otherwise they're the same. So nosotros, it's imos, and vosotros, instead of, um, instead of ace, it's just is, and the I does have the accent. Okay. Let me go back up and get my accented I. Put it in here. Copy. All right. Oops, a little too far up. Ah, oh, right here. Paste. Okay, so the accent is. Oh, you eat peanuts. That's what I just tra uh, translated. Tu comes cacahuates. You eat peanuts. Is that what you're referring to? I think I see that's what's highlighted there. Yeah. And I accidentally had cap locks on. I didn't feel like going back. And okay. I didn't see that. Put, I didn't see that. I was the translation uh, of that. Sentence. Strange. All caps. Yeah. You eat peanuts. <laughs> yeah. I hate the, the all caps thing. Yeah. It bother, it's bothersome. I, I know some people, that's the way they, they, they communicate, but. Yeah, it makes it very difficult to read, doesn't it? Uh, to me, it's it's harder to to read. Yeah. Okay, so um, IR verbs. Let's just look at one IR verb we looked at vivir the other day, which is to live. Let's look at. I always have a hard time coming with IR verbs because there's not nearly as many IR verbs in the Spanish lexicon. So we'll just do this one. This is to pretend. Seen here to pretend. Okay. To pretend. So I'll have, we'll switch it up a little. We'll have Emma do the two and the vosotros form. Um, Owen, you can do nosotros. Um, Nehemiah, you can do yo. Uh, you can do usted aleya and ustedes ellos ellas. So remember, the endings with the exception of nosotros and vosotros are the same as ER verbs. I'll just go ahead and fill that in. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, right? Which one am I doing? Vita, is that Vita or is that Emma? It's Vita. Is that you, Vita? OK, yes. the last two on the bottom. Oops, not a zero. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
here we go. Oh, but up on this one, um, uh, uh, Nehemiah, right here where I, the box is above. There you go. Which one am I doing? These two, ustedes, usted Aleya. Right here. These ones I've highlighted. One's right there. I highlighted. Okay, muy bien. Um, Nehemiah, finjo, muy bien. Being hymns. Again, don't forget to, you have to, um, Okay, so Emma, you have the bos you have the nosotros endings. Remember to drop off the IR. Okay? Drop off that IR. So I'm gonna revisit your um your answer there. I know sometimes it, it, it so it should be fin himos, you have fin hirmos. We say to drop off the ending because it, that will work for every form. I could just say drop off the R and add, you know, MOS, but it doesn't work for the yo form. So this is a, a formula that works for all six forms. So yeah, no end there. Get rid of that end. Fingimos. Okay, so you dropped off the dropped off the IR, you had F-I-N-G left, and then you added the emos, so fingimos, okay? And Emma, you did this one, this this one should have F-I-N-G, okay? So just look at the, the chart above, Emma. What am I gonna add to the F-I-N-G nosotros one? I'm gonna add this I-S, okay? I'm gonna add this I-S here. Okay, so I have finjis. So Vita, um, look at the chart. Okay, so E and E N are your endings. There you go. Yeah, because they're almost exactly like. ER, with the exception of nosotros and vosotros. You stuck Emma on the two form? Oh, someone's got some music playing. In the okay, so Emma, what's left after I drop the IR off of Fien I have F-I-N-G, so type that in. Type in your F-I-N-G, F-I-N-G, okay? And then the ending for two on IR verbs is E-S. There you go. Tu fin his. So you pretend to be a teacher. Tu fin his. Sora, okay? And we learned to be, ser. Okay, so you pretend. You pretend to be a teacher. Okay. Tu finges, oops, fin, yeah, finges. Ser, sora. You pretend to be, tu finges ser profesora. Remember ser is an infinitive, right? We, we, we learned that um, last week, week before, it means to be. Okay, comprenden. So we'll, we'll get better at this. We'll have more stuff to do with this. Um, so I just the more the more times we go over it, the better you'll get it. And like I said, they this isn't even introduced until next chapter, but it's so important to get familiar. 
um, of the whole conjugation process. I, I feel introducing it now as, as buena idea. It's a good idea. Okay, so now let's look at Pagina 58. Everyone should have their books with them. Pagina 58, page 58. We're going to go over the, uh, we're going to start looking at um, chapter 2. Okay, we're going to start looking at chapter 2. So we'll start with the vocabulario. Okay. So repeat en la familia. Ah, vida no tienes libro, eh? Okay, so... Yeah. I'll type the words up for you, Vita, at the bottom of this. Okay. La familia. I have my book. Oh, you do? Yay! I just got a couple Good, of just, ago. Oh, great. Página 58. So, family. Repite la familia. La familia. La familia. Okay. So, um, in the corner you have um, a picture of a, a young lady. And so everything, on all these people on here are her relatives. Um, and we'll figure out from which side of her family they are. Because we'll tell us, you know, if it's mom's side, da, mom's side, dad's side. Look at it. She says, hola, soy Daniela Lopez. Yo tengo una mascota cariñosa. Su nombre es Rayas. Tengo muchos parientes. So looking at um, this word, at the, the last word in her little um, voice bubble, or her little, uh, what do we call it? Just bubble, right? And her little speaking bubble. She said, Tengo parientes. I have many. What What does parientes look like? It looks like parents, right? It looks like it would be parents. But it's a false cognate, meaning it looks like a word in English, but it's not the same word. It means something different. Okay, so it's a false cognate or a half cognate, right? So it, it really means relatives. So she says, I have a lot of relatives. Are you guys paying attention? You the, the Google Doc. Okay. So she says, Hola. She says, Hello, my name is Danielle, Daniela Lopez. Yo tengo una mascota cariñosa. I have a loving pet. Mascota looks like mascot. It's pet in Spanish, pet. It's the generic word for domesticated animals that live in your house. Okay. His name or her name is Rayas. It's his name. You should see down there. Repiten. Mi gatito Rayas. Mi gatito Rayas. My little cat or my kitten. Okay. So um, anytime you put ito on the end of a word, it means small or it's a term of endearment. Okay. So when I, um, hijo is child, and I say my child, mi hijo, and if I say, oh, come here, mi hijo, so I'm, you know, it's a term of endearment. It's like, come here, my, my, my baby boy, come here, my little son kind of thing, but I'm not calling them small. It's a term of endearment. Um, when you add that to people's name, like Juanito, um, from the um, name Juan, like Juan is John, but Juanito is kind of like Johnny, you know, kind of like a nickname. Johnny or, or Little John. It could be Little John as well if um, you have a husband named Juan and you call you, you named your son Juan as well. We could say Juanito. John and Little John. Juanito. Okay. So look at the top of the column of the, the family tree here. Repeat in mis abuelos. Mis abuelos. Everybody have their sound off. Okay. But here you're repeating your man. Mis abuelos. Mis abuelos. Mis abuelos. Mis abuelos. So what are, uh. What does it look like the relation? So mis is my. Okay, my. So she's saying my. So what we can assume that these are what? Her grandparents. Just from the from the age we see, right? Okay, so grandparents. So notice um 
looking at the bottom, repiten, mi abuelo Juan López. Mi abuelo. Uh, Juan, Juan López. Juan López. Okay. And mi abuela, Ana López. Mi abuela. What page is it? It's still 58, right? 58. Uh -huh. We're on that first picture on the on the the column going down with all her family members. Um, it's right under the um, the picture of her grandma and grandpa. So it says, mi abuelo Juan López, my grandfather. Okay, so um, abuelo. Okay. Mi abuela Ana López. Mi abuela. I don't know how you guys can mute me. Me. No. <laughs> you don't want to hear me anymore? That's funny. Juan López. Okay, so um, don't mute me. You mute other people, don't mute me. Okay, so abuelos, so abuelo is grandpa, abuela is grandma, but when we put them together, we have abuelos. Okay. So remember I've told you, Spanish usually defers to the masculine. And going down the, um, looking at the right hand side, I'm the, sorry, the left hand side, mis, repite, mis padres. Mis padres. Mis padres. Mis padres. Mis you padres. might recognize this from uh, the San Diego baseball team, right? The San Diego Padres. <laughs> I assume padres. that. I assume, padres. Emma. You think Juan did it. <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay. So, um, repite, mi padre Pedro. Mi padre Pedro. Mi padre, mi padre mi padre, Pedro. Pedro. Mi padre, mi padre Alicia. Mi padre. Mi madre Alicia. Alicia. Mi, pa, mi padre. Mi, mi padre mi, Pedro is almost a tongue a tongue twister. Okay, so padre, notice again, um, padre is 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 father. But when I, we talk, I think we talked about this. Um, but when I pluralize it, we take the masculine form. So my parents, padre. Um, I suppose, like we've talked about in now day and age, if someone says mis padres, it could be referring to their two fathers, but most likely not. Um, they're referring to their parents. Okay. Um, and then looking next to her her parents, we have, repiten mis tíos. Mis tíos. Mis tíos. So what do you think tíos is, okay? So obviously if they're next to next to her parents, those are gonna be her aunts and uncles. Her So mis tíos is, would be my aunt and uncle. Again, deferring to the masculine. Repiten, mi, mi tía Laura. Mi tía Laura. Mi tío Alberto. Mi tío Alberto. Mi tío Alberto. Okay, so who have we figured out who, um, which side of the family is this? Is it her mom's side or her dad's side? Making some assumptions that it would be her father's side, right? Because her last name is Lopez. The grandparents' last name is Lopez. Unless both mom and dad's last name, you know, maybe mom's maiden name was Lopez as well. But... From what we have from the information we can we can probably make a fair assumption that um this is her dad's side of the family okay going on down repiten mis hermanos mis hermanos mis hermanos okay so we can assume from the from the family tree that what is what are hermanos These are obviously her brothers, but hermanos is going to be brothers and sisters. If I say, yo tengo tres hermanos, do you know whether I have, is that, am I definitely saying that I have? No, it can be a combination because hermanos, we have to say brothers and sisters. They just say hermanos. So um, in English, if I say I have three brothers and sisters, do you know what combination I have either? You do know that I have at least one brother and one sister. Okay, we don't know what the third child is. Um, but in Spanish, it's pretty um, vague because mis hermanos, I could have three brothers, I could have a brother and two sisters. 
hermanos, it means I have to have at least one brother, right? Because it's the, the masculine form. So Daniela tiene dos hermanos. She has two brothers. Repite, mi hermano Julio. Mi hermano David. Okay, my brother Julio and my brother David. Okay, and then uh, nuestro perro Duque. Okay, nuestro perro Duque. Perro is dog. Nuestro is our. Okay, so obviously in this chapter we're going to be learning possessive adjectives. She has possessive adjectives all the way through. Mis abuelos, mi padre, mi madre, mi tía. And then she switches to nuestro perro Duque. Excuse me. Our dog, Duke. Okay. And then looking next over there from deduction. Um, repite, mi primo Emilio. Mi primo Emilio. Okay. We can deduct from the family tree that what is Emilio's relationship to Daniela? <laughs> Emma, go for it. <laughs> That's funny. So, primo means cousin, because obviously that's her aunt's son, so therefore it is her cousin. Okay. Um, let's have um, Vita go ahead and read what says in her little caption there on the next page. Mi tía Laura es la hermana de mi padre. Sigio Emilio Hijo. es mi primo. Huh? That's okay, keep uh, going. Primo, yo so, soy la sobrina de mi tía. Muy bien. Okay. Can you tell us here? Mi tía, mi tía Laura es la hermana de mi padre. So now we know what the relationship is here, right? So we know that Pedro and Laura son hermanos, right? They're brother and sister. Okay. Because she said she's the sister of my father. Su hijo, her son, Emilio, es mi primo. We knew that, right? He's my cousin. Y yo soy la sobrina de mi tía. And I am the what of my aunt. I am the niece. So we know the niece is sobrina. What's going to be nephew? Sobrino. If I want to talk about my nieces and nephews, I say, mis sobrinos, my nieces and nephews. Mis sobrinos son muy inteligentes, right? That's just, they are, they are for the most part. Not, not, not entirely an untrue statement, okay? Um, Owen, you want to go ahead and uh, read for us um, what I mean? Are you with us, Owen? No, you cut out. Okay. Go ahead and read for us what Emilio says on the top of page 59. He says, Hola, soy Emilio Martín. Mis abuelos son Juan y Ana López. Yo soy su nieto. Okay. Yes, Hi, I'm Emilio. Emilio. What's that? For, he has to get a charger for his computer real quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> Death has come, huh? Okay. My grandparents are Juan and Ana Lopez. We knew that, right? Because his parent, his mom is their daughter. Yo soy su nieto. I am their grandchild. Nieto is grandchild. I am their grandchild. So unlike traditional Spanish, uh, vocabulary books um, they use stuff in sentences to help you learn you know to learn through context um, and they also throw in brand new brand new vocabulary so we don't have a per se a list of which ones are vocabulary words but just assume that anything family related on these pages are your is your vocabulary list okay conversar um, we have the conversation here. ¿Cuántos años tienen tus hermanos? He asks her, how old are your brothers? Really, technically it says, how many years do your brothers have? 
So in Spanish, when we tell somebody our age, we don't say I am and then a number. We say I have and then a number. Okay. So if I were 25, I'd say yo tengo 25 años. Or if I'm 13, yo tengo. Okay, you tell them how many years you have. Uh, sorry about the charger I just got. I have the page. Su computadora está muerta, huh? Dying yeah. computer. Okay, so now we, we, I went ahead and read it. So moving down, um, so last, um, last chapter when we talked about hair, we used it as an adjective to describe the person, right? We said she is red, she is redheaded, he is blonde, they are dark haired. As adjectives, we, we didn't actually describe the hair, we described the person as that's what they are. So um, this time around, we're giving you, and remember I told you castaño was in there um, for brown-haired, um, kind of like chestnut-colored. So well, let's look at, repiten, el pelo castaño. El pelo castaño. Blonde hair, el pelo rubio. El pelo rubio. And black hair, el pelo negro. El pelo negro. Okay. So rubio, all those all those three adjectives, castaño, rubio, and negro, they're describing hair. Okay. So it doesn't change. So I would say I have blonde hair. Yo tengo pelo rubio. Or I can say yo soy rubia. First example, rubio is describing hair. There, that's why it's masculine. But blonde. I'm now describing myself, so it changes to rubia. That's why there's a difference there. So, um, and then looking at eyes, we'll add eye colors in here. Repiten los ojos azules. Los ojos azules. Los ojos verdes. Los ojos verdes. Y los ojos castaños. Los ojos castaños. So, um, eyes and just this kind of like chestnut brown, kind of medium to dark brown color. ¿Qué buscas? Está en la ventana en mi baño. Okay. Casi terminado. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. My son was needing something. Okay, and then just a quick note. Um, in many societies, well, I shouldn't say many societies, but in, in many, a good many number of homes in the Americans. Now we have step parents, step brothers, step sisters. So um, this never would have been found in a Spanish book 30 years ago. Um, I never knew it until I actually started using this. So I went back to college. But anyways, so anytime you want to make step out of out of your main family members, I don't know how to do it with like grandparents I did look it up the other day it was similar but to father and sister and mother and brother just drop off the vowel okay drop off the e and add astro mother, uh, mother stepmother drop off the e off of madre and add astra okay so repeat in mi padrastro mi padrastro mi madrastra mi padrastra mi hermanastro and me hermanastra, okay? So stuff that you need to know, I mean, it may not be in your family, but you're having a conversation with someone who has step-siblings or step-parents, then you'll need to recognize, okay, padrastro, and um, that's a, a you know, stepfather. Or mis padrastros, my step-parents, that obviously means that both your parents remarried. So it's just common. Most of my classes are all with their two original parents, but, um, it exists. It's it's pretty prevalent. I grew up with step parents as well. So, okay. So I wanted to get step parents. What's that? How would you say your step parents? What's that? Say one more time. How would you say your step parents? Su, sus. Okay. So, and we'll get into that um, next week. Su, if it's one. Sus, if it's two. So sus, padrastros. You you defer to the masculine. Sus padrastros. So if you say, um, are your step parents nice? Son sus padrastros. 
simpáticos? Are, are your step parents nice? You know, a lot of people get along with their step parents. Some step parents, not so much. Um, my stepdad was all right. My stepmom, well. Okay. She was all right. <laughs> okay, preguntas. Any questions? Your homework's been listed since Monday. So I want to make sure you had that. I told you well, it was late, late Monday night, I think, maybe. But I did list it very early for you. So um, did some different things. Um, trying and um, there's a new uh, a new online. So we the publisher has online activities. So you'll see some of those. Um, so you will have to send me snapshots of some of those because those don't get reported to me. There's one you scroll to the bottom and it has a, ch a place where you can put in my email address. If you if there's a place for you to put in my email address, you don't need to snap uh, screenshot it. But um, the first three exercises you'll have to screenshot and send to me. But again, if you have joined, has everybody joined um, Quizlet with me? I'll check on it. Um, but if you join Quizlet, you don't need to send me, um, you don't need to send me screenshots anymore because that's all reported to me. So, si no preguntas, hasta lunes. Adios. 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 Uh, adios. <laughs> no, there was only. My name. Oh. God damn it.